Hi friends, and welcome to finally the second episode of Books and Hooks. <laughs> so it's been a little while since I last did one of these. I didn't intend to wait this long to do another episode, but today I wanted to do the mid-year book freakout tag and I thought that was the perfect opportunity to do like an update. So before we get started, um, if you haven't seen the first episode, the project that I'm working on in this video is my year-long project, which is my mental health blanket. So I put together January, February, and March just to see like how big the blanket would turn out and or wide. And it's it's wide. It's wide. <laughs> this is January. This right here is February. And this is March. So um, it's wide enough for me to wrap it around my shoulders, which is great. I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. There's so many ends to weave in, but you know, that's what, that's what podcasts are for. We're just going to pretend that's not there. So the section I'll be working on today is May's Square, which I'm very behind on, but I wanted to keep it at this like state so you could see how pretty it is the way that it is right now. Look at that. May was the first time that I got to use this dark pink that's up here, Flamingo. Um, this is on the higher end of my mental health spectrum, so you know, you can guess how the year's been kind of going. But I'm glad that it took a turn and I got to use this. Oh, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera having the lighter colors there, but I'll leave a link to my Instagram where I posted a picture of it so you could see it better. May is pretty easy. I'm just going to be using these two colors for a while. <laughs> just alternating between these two. Um, so it's an easy project for this. Oh, and one more project to show you that I finished since the last time we spoke. Um, I haven't really been crocheting or knitting a lot in the past few months, but I did make this daisy bucket hat. I'll leave a link to the vlog that I made this in so that you can see it. It's not like a full process video or anything like that, but it's some snippets. So this is the hat. <laughs> it's so cute. I don't want to make my hair any more unruly than it is. Oh yeah, this is how much my hair has grown. The context, if you don't know, is that I shaved my head in January, January 1st. And so this is the growth that it has from January 1st to now. Sometimes I think it's going kind of stagnant and then I remember that like because of the curls, it's not growing like straight out. So I end up having to like run my fingers through my hair to remind myself that like it is growing. <laughs> But anyway, on to the mid-year book freakout tag. I'm gonna have the questions right here on my phone and we're just gonna talk about my reading year thus far. So just some quick stats to start us out. At the time I'm recording this, which is June 28th, 2022, I have read 62 books so far this year. My goal was 50. I finished that, I think the last week of May, which is kind of rare for me. This year I also started, um, well, not that I wasn't keeping track before, but this is just a little bit more in depth, but keeping track of the manga that I'm reading. I don't know why I don't count it towards my reading goal. I know other people do. This is just the way that makes sense in my head. But I wanted to also keep track of what I'm saving on manga by using the library because I'm also tracking what I'm saving on books overall through the library with my regular novels and everything else that isn't manga. So I have read 82 volumes of manga this year so far. I've gone through a couple series like really, really fast. I'm suffering a little, but it's fine. I don't think a single manga that I've read this year was not from the library. The total dollar value of what I've read in manga this year is $1,006.11. And then for everything else that isn't manga, $1,097.97, which brings the total savings so far this year to $2,104.08. I think only two or three books like a very low number of what I've read this year was owned and then I got some others from like Kindle Unlimited but I had like a free trial to Kindle Unlimited so uh, yeah about 90% of what I have read this year has been from the library I'll put a little graph up here just note that Libby <laughs> is also the library but I'm tracking in my spreadsheet the source that I got it from so if it's like physically from the library or if I got the ebook from Libby so yeah, it's about 90-ish percent. So finally, onto the tag. The very first question is the best book you've read so far in 2022. This might be the only book I have to hold up right now, so I'm just gonna prop it up here so that I can actually get started on the stitching. It's Brown Girls by Daphne Palacio Andreades, my beloved. To be honest with you, I'm not really sure anything is gonna top this book. I don't really think that I'm gonna find a new favorite of the year, even of all time. 
the way that this is for me and I've also not really wanted to talk about or not that I haven't wanted to talk about it but it's been hard to talk about it because of how impactful it was on me it feels just so personal that I almost don't want anybody else to read it is that does that make any sense I don't know if anybody else has had that experience but this book to me was the first book that I really felt seen in or that I really really saw myself uh, in a way that I I guess I didn't think I ever would you know I've definitely seen snippets in other books or felt oh you know this is what my life is like or was like or this is what my family's like in other books but I don't think I've ever felt anything the way that I did when I read Brown Girls and I think that's largely in part because it takes place in Queens which I feel I haven't really read enough of in books because usually when a novel is set in New York City it's either Manhattan like the upper west side or something like that or Brooklyn maybe but I feel like Queens is much less common and also the way that the book is written which is in this like choral voice so we do this we say this really did a lot <laughs> for me when reading this you really feel like you're a part of something and I don't know I, I feel like this was a case of this book just coming into my life at exactly the right time and being exactly what I needed it details the lives of girls living in Queens New York throughout their lifetime so from childhood to death and even after I just think that she really captured the experience of living in and growing up in Queens and feeling all of these pulls from different parts of your identity as a New Yorker, as a woman, as a queer person, as the child of immigrants or just people who have come here looking for a better life, seeing the places that I went to after school or to visit friends, the different parts of Queens, the high schools my friends went to. I just didn't think it would have that as much of an impact on me seeing it on paper as it did, but I could not put the book down. I think I finished it in one or two sittings um, with pauses to cry. <laughs> there were lots of quotes that really resonated with me, that really hit me, and I just couldn't help but think of all the girls that I grew up with and all of the people that I may have lost contact with and the people that I still have in my life. I don't know, I, I can't explain the depth of my love for this book. It's just me, it's me in a book. I, I feel very, very much loved and seen by this book and I really don't think anything is gonna top it this year. I think things will come close and I think I'll feel excitement, hopefully, I'll feel excitement over a book in a way that tells me it's gonna be one of my all-time favorites but I really don't think anything is going to like see me and like capture my soul I guess. I, I hope that doesn't sound cheesy the way that Brown Girls has. I, I just don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> Also, I got the chance to meet the author at a um, event especially for this book, held in Queens of course, and she was so sweet. Listening to her speak just made me feel inspired and motivated and you know hopefully one day I'll be able to finish one of my billion projects because if I can make somebody feel the way that this book made me feel, I mean that would be incredible. The second question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2022. This question always trips me up because I'm not a huge series reader, but in May I read through all of the Wayward Children series by Sean and McGuire. The series essentially follows a school for children who have like opened doors to other worlds and gone through and then came back and they're kind of like having a really hard time readjusting to this world because all they want to do is go back to that world that knew them so well and where they felt like they could finally belong. So the books have like odd and even books and I can't remember which is which. I'm pretty sure it's the even ones that follow characters in the worlds that they have gone to and then the odd ones take place at Eleanor West School for Wayward Children. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes and I like all of them but I really like the even books where you go into that character's world I'm trying to remember the name <laughs> of the first one that I had like really really liked in an absent dream and then I also really enjoyed across the green grass fields I don't know why I thought I wasn't going to like that one as much and then it surprised me by being one of my favorites in the series I think that's actually the only series that I've read so far this year uh, but I'm glad it's that one because I've made a new discovery and they're really fun to read and so easy to fly through. The next question is your favorite reread. So I actually haven't reread anything yet this year. I usually try to 
wait until I've hit my goal and then I can start rereads. That's like an arbitrary rule in my head. To be honest, I don't even know if I plan on rereading anything other than probably Ninth House, which... Oh, huh, where's Ninth House? Oh, it's all the way back there. You can't see it. But I'll more than likely reread Ninth House at the end of the year because the sequel, Hellbent, is finally coming out at the beginning of January. Is it the beginning? It's sometime in January. And either way, it's too far from this point in time. Then we have a question that I actually took from Kayla, Books and Lala, which is the genre you've been loving slash reading the most. I checked right before I started on this video and it looks like the genre that I've been reading the most is contemporary, followed very closely by fantasy. Then much lower on the list, I had literary fiction, which to be honest with you, I don't know if I classify them quite right most of the time so I think it's pretty safe to put those two together uh, and say that I've been reading a lot of like rooted in this world kind of books a lot of what I would call sad girl books I guess I've been really loving how do I put this women in their 20s who are really lost but not because they just got out of college and they don't know what's happening just because your 20s are a really weird time there's lots of small absurd things that go on and I love when books touch on those. I'm so silly. I put three single crochets here in this corner when it should be two in the corner. What do I do? Do I unravel it? I'm not unraveling it. I'm just, I'm gonna go with my mistakes. I made a mistake on my January blanket. I don't remember exactly what the mistake was, but I know I made a mistake on it and I left it alone because we are going to take this blanket flaws and all and it's gonna be fine. Anyway, so women in their 20s, a um, little bit unhinged, I like. Characters that are haunted, characters that are desperate, like in Acts of Desperation by Megan Nolan. I'm loving characters who are in their late 20s. I'm not running into them a lot yet, but I would love to see more of it. Just because, like I said, it's a weird time. It's a very strange time. <laughs> a new release you haven't read yet, but want to. I actually struggled with this because I haven't really been keeping up with what's coming out and what is out. I'm thinking The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan. I heard somebody say that if you liked The Push by Ashley Audrain, which I loved, then this would be a good book to check out. It came out in January and I already have it requested from the library. Hopefully it'll come in today so that I can pick it up after this video. I don't really remember much, but if it's compared to The Push, I'm gonna expect it to be a little bit haunting, I suppose, or maybe something that'll make me think. I would like that. Similarly, we have most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I'm a little sad that I don't keep track of what's coming out anymore because I used to do this on like a monthly basis. But two upcoming books that I've kind of had my eye on or that I felt a little bit of a pull towards are Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Although now I can't remember why I felt a pull towards it, but I'm still gonna look for it. And later on in the year in like October, September, um, House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. I did read The Year of the Witching and the atmosphere was perfect for that time of year. So I'm hoping that House of Hunger is going to give me more of that. Ooh, the next question is biggest disappointment. There were definitely books that I really disliked, but then I don't know if there was anything that I had such high hopes for that I was really let down by. So I don't know if I have like a real answer to this question, but I guess I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. Not that I didn't like the book, not that I didn't have fun reading it, not that I didn't enjoy myself, but it's probably my least favorite Casey McQuiston book so far. Just because I didn't fall head over heels for all of the characters the way that I did with the first two books. The next question is the biggest surprise you had this year. I feel like a lot of what I've been reading so far this year has been a surprise to me, <laughs> just because I don't know what I want to read or I haven't really had as clear of an indication to myself of what to pick up next. Ugh, the battery's dying. Okay, BRB. Now I can't remember where the start of this was. <laughs> but I think in terms of answers for this question, I would have to go with either No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood or Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. No One Is Talking About This came as a surprise just because I hadn't heard anything about it and I just saw it at a table at Barnes & Noble. The title intrigued me couldn't understand the dust jacket. I was like, this is like kind of vague. Went home and requested it at the library just to see like what was up with it. And because it was such a, it's such a small book, a short book and ended up loving it. <laughs> 
I think it's kind of hard to recommend to people because you have to be like really online, like chronically online to not give up, I think. <laughs> Anyway, at least for me, it worked. Um, I really enjoyed it, and it was another one of those books that I really needed at the time. It, it just came across my radar at exactly the right moment, and I'm glad that I read it, so that was a surprise. And then Station Eleven, it's not a matter of me not thinking that I was going to enjoy it, but I was a little surprised at how much I did and the ways that I did, or what I got out of the book, which is a surprisingly hopeful feeling. I also started the series adaptation for it and I'm not very far in because I'm not very good at watching stuff but I'm really enjoying it so far. I think they've made some interesting choices <laughs> in terms of some things that have been changed but either way it's still a really great character story, a story about connections and art and people and humanity. I just, I really really enjoyed that book. I, it just caught me a little bit off guard, I think. Then we have a new favorite author, either debut or new to you. I don't know if I can count the author of Station Eleven since I've only read that one book, but I just have a feeling, you know? Then again, the answer that I was actually thinking of, I've only read one book from, I think it's her debut, um, Megan Nolan, the author of Acts of Desperation. I just thought that book was done so well um, because it's about a woman who is stuck in this relationship that's not good for her, but she's just so like obsessive over this man. I think she captured the little intricacies of it very well um, to the point that I felt a little bit attacked <laughs> and a little bit like I had been, uh, I don't know, like she went through my diaries or something from like my early 20s or late teens and yeah, that was something. But I really enjoyed her writing style and so I'm looking forward to anything else that she puts out that I'm definitely going to be picking up. Then we have a book that made you cry. The War Outside by Monica Hesse. Your first warning is literally the first page of the book. It's a historical YA book set in a Japanese and German internment camp, I'm pretty sure it was. And then following the relationship of these two girls as they become friends and get closer. It was one of those books that kind of sneaks up on you because I didn't think that I was as invested as I was until I read most of the book physically and then I, I switched to the audiobook. And something about listening makes me react out loud more, I guess, because as I was listening, I can hear myself going, no, and just like having all of these vocal reactions to it. And then of course I did that thing where as soon as you're done with a book that you love or that has just left like an emotional impact on you, you have to yell at everybody you know about that book. I was just like wailing to my mom and to my boyfriend about what I had just read and reading them quotes and being like, can you believe this? And yeah, so to war outside made me cry and it was very good. Then we have a book that made you happy. I have a couple that made me smile or just made me feel warm in some way. One of these being Lonely Castle in the Mirror right here by Tsujimura Mizuki. It just reminded me of the imagination and the lightness. I don't think lightness is the right word, but it's the closest thing to what I'm trying to get out of my brain right now of being 14, which I think is how old the the protagonist is here, but it also has this element of, should I say sci-fi? I don't know, magic? Uh, something that just really works for me and it just really made me happy. Book Lovers by Emily Henry made me laugh in a way that only Emily Henry can. And similarly, I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston, same thing. Um, if you've read a Casey McQuiston book, you know like the, the charm that they put into the characters' voices and dialogue. Station Eleven I think also deserves to be on this list because it made me feel hope. Not necessarily hope for the future, but hope for now. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I think you understand, right? I think you understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the next question is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. This entire stack behind me, I can't remember the name of the series, but it starts with Rhapsody by Elizabeth Hayden. I think these covers are just so beautiful. I'm not going to show all of them, but you can Google them and see. Um, it's actually the covers that made me buy these books because I don't normally read fantasy of this kind, like with dragons and like high fantasy, um, possibly medieval setting kind of thing. But probably my favorite cover that I've bought is volume two of the Genshin comic anthology. Partly because of all the colors on the cover, they're just beautiful, but also because of Albedo. 
Like Albedo is the most beautiful thing on this cover. There's only one question left, so I'm just not gonna start a new row. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? Honestly, I would just like to keep finding books in a way that makes me feel like I've stumbled upon them, you know? I don't know, there's just something so good about a hidden gem, you know? They've become, some of them have become my, my new favorites, either of all time or just this year in general, and I feel like I've had a very good reading year because of that. But I guess if there was any solid answer for this, it would probably be Emily St. John Mandel's latest two books, like The Glass Hotel and Sea of Tranquility, because I loved Station Eleven, and I just know that I'm gonna really, really enjoy those. So that's about it for today and for this video. This is where the square has left off. Let's see if I can get a shadow over this so you can see the colors. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what your favorite read of this year has been so far. Um, feel free to answer any of these questions in the comments. Of course, let me know if there's any crochet or knitting or just any sort of project you've been working on this year that you feel proud of or that you're excited to finish or if you've started setting goals for next year. I know it's kind of early, but these things take time. <laughs> I hope you're doing well, stay safe, and I will see you soon, hopefully. <laughs> Bye.